If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. Mm -hmm. So for 50 minutes, we don't talk too much about fitness, but we have a lot of fun uh, doing our introductory conversation. We start out by talking about Netflix's new show, You. Apparently, that's a good one. Adam's recommending. It's not, it's not me to you. And scary uh, <laughs> movies. Again, we're trying to convince Adam to watch scary movies. Uh, we don't think it's working. One of these days. Then we talked about things that were stuck in people's orifices in 2018. Uh, we actually got a report that talked about all the funny things people got stuck in their butts. Uh, it's a pretty fun part of this episode. Gets a little stinky. Then we talked about toxic relationship habits, salary, and attractiveness. We talked about the new Juve Go Light. That's a, the red light therapy. It's a portable device. It's rechargeable. You don't have to you plug it in. You charge it up. You can unplug it, use it, travel with it. It's pretty awesome. Juve is one of our sponsors. If you go to juve.com, J-O-O-V-V.com forward slash mind pump and get yourself a Juve Light, you will get a free MAPS Prime program and you get free shipping with the purchase of $500 or more. Then we talked about Amazon and how they're going to be giving out free samples of products. They're going to kill everybody. Uh, they're planning on it. And along those lines, Bezo, he's getting divorced, poor guy. Yeah. That's going to be an expensive divorce. That's, yeah. Then we talked about how running an eight-minute mile and other things, like deadlifting your own body weight, significantly lower. So if you can do those things, it significantly lowers your risk of all-cause mortality and how Health IQ, the premier life insurance company for fit and healthy people uses those types of statistics to offer you low, low price for life insurance for your family. They are one of our sponsors. If you go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump and take the health IQ quiz, there's some good questions in there, like questions about nutrition and your fitness and all that stuff. You'll get a free quote. Make sure you scroll to the bottom of the page for the free quiz. Then we talked about uh, Carl's Jr. and their Beyond Meat Burger. What are they? the hell yeah, are they doing i don't know man that's stupid and then we talked about our favorite fast food uh restaurants uh, no we don't eat them now but this is back in the day like last week yeah. then we get into the fitness questions the first fitness question was what ab exercises are the ones that we think are the best for building your abs so not just for strengthening your core but the ones that actually make your abs more visible so we give some suggestions in that part of this episode the next question was, uh, what do we think of people who say that glute bridges are the number one compound lift? Besides crazy, what else do we think mm, about these people? Yeah, you should do some research. The third question, uh, what are our thoughts on unsolicited gym advice? Um, and the final question, if you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you're a complete newbie, what are some good starting books and websites and stuff to look at and read? Also... MAPS Anabolic, our foundational flagship MAPS program, which is phenomenal for building your metabolism, sculpting your body, and building muscle and strength. It's a great program. This month, 50% off, half off. All you got to do is go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code RED50, R-E-D-5-0, no space, for 50% off. Also, there's going to be a new version that will be, be released soon of MAPS Anabolic, you will automatically get updated, including everybody who has MAPS Anabolic. So if you already own that program, then you will automatically get updated with the new version. And if you want to look at our other MAPS fitness programs, uh, we have programs for athletes, programs for people who want to compete in bikini or bodybuilding competitions, people who want to sculpt their body like a bodybuilder, people who want to work out like a strongman, and many others. They're all found at mapsfitnessproducts.com. What's that song you were going to start with, Justin? Oh, I was going to. You guys remember that? Uh, was was it called a short circuit? Was Hell that, yeah, yeah, Johnny so, Five. Okay, so do you remember the gang that was in that movie? Okay, so it's I Miss, do. Miss Locos. Yes. Oh, oh yes. What's what's the Miss song? Miss Locos, kick your head. Miss Locos, kick your face. Miss Locos, kick your balls into outer space. Oh yeah. So you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I love that. That was like my favorite song. I would sing all the time. My parents so were so good. mad at me. Did you watch the um, the remake of it? You know the what's Chappie? 
Did you guys ever watch that no, one? No, that's not a remake of Johnny Five. Well, I, no, it's not. It kind of is, though. You know, it's it like, it's, I don't watch Chappie. It's like the the yeah the evolved version of it, right? Yeah, so yeah. he becomes like artificial intelligence. Yeah, and then he gets into a gang and everything. Like that it's very it's they totally remade the movie. No, right? you're right. Actually, yeah. if you yeah if you look at you know uh, it's, Short Circuit. Yeah. No, they totally. I, I like my robot movies dark. I don't like the night. You know what I mean? Like I'm a robot and I'm cool. Hey, I'm cute. Like get yeah. out of here. Yeah. I want one that's gonna kill. Have you? You still everyone. haven't watched the show I told you about? No, I'm watching it tonight. You are? Yeah. Okay, I can't wait. Yeah. What's it called? You. Okay. Y-O-U. That's all right, it. All right, all right. It's, you know, I, I I got my buddy, my best friend listening to it's it. It's on YouTube? Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Did I say YouTube? You. You did. I did, really? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I right. apologize to the audience. No it's problem. you. My buddy said that it was originally a funny, Lifetime series or oh. show, which is funny because- If you like, ever want a good cry, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Watch some Lifetime. But it's not like that at all. It's definitely not a cry. It's a, it's a uh, you're going to like it because it's, it's intelligently written. It's twisted. Oh, I love that part. Yes, I know. I know yeah, you like that. Yeah. And it's extremely unique. I can't- Does it leave you at the end of it feeling weird? Yeah, like you got to take a shower. You know what I mean? Like, do you question things afterwards? Yeah. Like, what is this well, real? It did a good job of me going. Like, I can't wait for season two. Okay, mm-hmm. so it did That's a good, good job of that. That's good. And it is also one of those shows that it can. Every episode, I think, I, I think it got better and better as it got deeper. It got better. Um, and maybe the first episode. I, I don't even think the first episode was slow. The first episode, I uh, because it. it was recommended to me. I always give something more than one one episode, All right? Because right? you know it takes a little yeah. bit sometimes. The first to episode the is always tough. Yeah, this is this There's is so much to cover. Yeah, I because uh, Jessica's she's going to go visit her family, so I'll be I'll be able to watch the really weird twisted shit now. Yeah, she kind of bothers her a little bit, hmm. like that. That you remember this her, one? She would not like then if that's really? how if she doesn't like twisted stuff. So my well, best poor, friend what I was going to tell you was my best friend. Uh, him and I have very similar taste in. in movies and shows and i love to get recommendations from him and, and so i send this one over to him and he he gets back to me like a couple days later and he's like he's like man i'm i'm surprised you really like that one i was like i was like really i was like you know i like something that's well written and, and i like twisted shit i think that's and i thought it was very unique and how the perspective that they they tell the whole story from and uh he's all yeah no he's all oh, i give it like a c plus or whatever and I'm like, really? And he's like, well, he goes, his wife, he goes, you're hated it. And I'm like, well, I could see how it's a, it's pretty creepy for a girl. Okay. If you're a girl and you watch it, I could see how you're like a little creeped out from it. Yeah. But I think you'll like yeah, it. Yeah, because I've, I've now had Jessica watch uh, Hill House, which she loved, but also terrible sleep. Yeah. Um, and the first Black Mirror, there was that one episode where they were trapped. The Christmas one. That one is so good, but that one really messed with her. It, it messed with me. It was so good. That's it, what was so good. That's why I liked it so much. But mm-hmm. it it messed with her so bad that she wasn't normal for a day or so. Like the, <laughs> like the next day, she was off, and I'm like, "What are you? What's the matter, babe?" And she's like, oh, "It's that thing we watched." Like, I don't know. Might, like, I like, is this the reality? Right? Yeah, now? it starts making you question shit. That's what I like. Yeah. I like that shit too. Yeah, I like to be all weird about shit. Yeah, th- th- what, uh, without giving away what this show is all about. Um, it, it's a, a newer show, so it gives you kind of this perspective from, it's a, like a millennial perspective. Uh, the a social media twist is on it a little bit. So I really like, I really like where, where they wrote this. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to give it away. Oh, I'm going to watch Just it. watch it. I just I'll know, watch it tonight. I, I know that you'll, you'll get a kick out of Done it. And we can talk about. That one, and then my sister told me, because I trust her, she knows me really well. Um, she's told me to stay away from the Hill House one because I won't like it. She goes because yeah. it's too scary. Your sister for me. said that. Oh, yeah, man. God, come why on. would she do that? Well, because she knows me. No, she, she, yeah, she, she knows me well. Stop she, babing your brother. She, she did. Yeah. Say, yeah. Yeah. Your brother's a big boy. He can handle it. <laughs> she did say I would like Bird Box though. Okay. She goes watch Bird Box. Yeah. You'll like. You'll like Hill House too. I don't like. No, you're just trying to scare me, dude. <sighs> what if I watch it's it with so you? So well written. <laughs> like, yeah, hold are, me. Are you more likely spoon me? Well, I mean, if you want, are you more likely to watch it if if Justin and I were there to support you? No. Right. Really. No. Are you more like okay? Let me ask you a question. Under pressure, yes, I will. If yeah, you okay, I'll, I'll never be that guy who's. The, I wouldn't be the dude in the room if the three of us were all traveling yeah, somewhere and we're yeah. like, let's watch this. Yeah. And I'm like, no, yeah. I don't want <laughs> it. Yeah. If I if I'm outnumbered, it's three to one. Well, like we're well, watching. Well, it. let me ask you this: Are you more likely to watch scary things alone or with a group? Which one are you more likely to do? Uh, that's a good question. Because there's I probably, I'll, oh, probably only a group. Because by myself, I would never probably do that. In a group, I could be pressured. But into let's it. say you had to watch it one way or the other. What would you prefer, alone or with a group? 
with a group. I don't care if you guys really? see me scared. Oh, okay. Cause, yeah, because yeah, there's that side of it, right? Like, do you, you don't want to show Well, you know friends. me. I'm secure. So it's yeah. like, whatever. Make fun. Yeah. I, I openly admit on the show. Yeah. Like, saying, well, like, that time. I'm scared I, of scary movies. That time I told the, the, the <laughs> campfire works. story at the, in Tahoe, <laughs> you jumped pretty far <laughs> out of your shit. You got everybody on that. Everybody one. jumped. Everybody jumped on everybody that. Everybody jumped. That was really, oh, that I, was I wish I didn't forget how you told it because it was really good. Oh, it's a great story. It's yeah. a great. I, I can't tell it on the show because no, it won't work. No, it won't work. Anyway. Man, I should be tired, but I'm not. Why? You ever get that like that where you you, you recognize? I didn't get good sleep last night, and then uh, you know, I got up early because my son's doing his eighth grade pictures, and uh, for the first time, he wants to like look good. Like he actually starting to care now a little bit. Ooh. And, yeah, so he's like, uh, he's like, Papa, I'm gonna wake up a little early, and uh, can you help me with my hair? And then I want to shave the night before because he just started shaving, so I'm helping him out and everything. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. I had to wake up early, and uh, that meant I had to get my workout started at 5.30. Oh, it's terrible. So yeah. I had to start my workout at 5.30, didn't get good sleep. I knew I had to get a uh, – I had a high-volume workout today. I did three uh, – let me see. I did nine sets per every body part, So I, and I had to finish that all un, in under 60 minutes in order to get up, up in time to get everything ready, get my kids ready, get my son, help him with his tie, shirt and tie, and all that shit. So I'm like, what do I do? And I'm off caffeine. So, except for green tea, I'll have a little bit of green tea, but right now I'm off caffeine. So I woke up and I had green tea and have you guys ever heard of Nupept? Yeah. I've heard of it, but I've never had yeah, it. Yeah. N-O-O-P-E-P-T. It's a weird it's word. It's a nootropic? It's a, it's a synthetic nootropic. It's a, it's, it's not a natural one. So it does definitely has effects. And uh, yeah, dude, that shit's got Is me. Is that the one that and fighter took... pilots uh, used? No, no that's modafinil. That's, yeah, that's modafinil. Yeah. That's right. yeah, I hate that stuff. Yeah. Have you guys ever tried that? I haven't. I've never tried it, but I, I've heard a lot of people talking about it. Bro, it gave me weird. I tried it once, and it gave me weird, like synesthesia effects in my face, and like like little oh, ping, wow. ping that, pricks and what shit. Is, what that is, can't be good. What is synesthesia? Uh, I think I'm using the right word. Where you start <laughs> where to you feel start to sensations. Is am I is that the wrong word? Am I using the wrong word? Maybe Duck could look it up. I but thought it was I, like a it was like a mix of like you could smell sounds or like it, like your your sensory you could smell it, Justin's sounds yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, like all of the sensory inputs you're were right. all cross firing yeah you're right that's what synesthesia no I didn't have that I had uh, yeah that's what synesthesia is. yeah no that's what you had that's where your uh, different kind of sensation a sensation in terms of another yeah you're you're right no this is where I was getting like feeling weird pinpricks in my face and shit and i'm like okay, oh, this, okay this is probably not good but the new pept with i had it with lion's mane this morning and a little bit of green tea and uh because i didn't have i'm having barely any caffeine so i'm like i need something else let's see what happens yeah it was um it was uh it was stimulating dude you know what uh, so he, your son was wearing a tie and everything yeah he wore a tie i had to comb his hair dude i was just i was trying to think of like around that time was where i started to kind of care too i remember like the distinctive look that I put together like myself and I thought I was like looking all sharp and it was like a bugle boy shirt. Oh yeah. You know, you had like the gold chain and then I had this like seriously high waved hair. <laughs> it was like so distinctive of like the eighties. I went on a kick where I used to wear a buttoned up shirt untucked with a tie loose with like jeans. You, you were like, you were like Ever Levine. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Did I ever live anymore? Yeah, I'm <laughs> this was I'm just skateboard. A, this, but just like, a boy. this was a lot I'm before. A this is a long time before her. <laughs> she Sal, com she copied you. Yeah. yeah, I did. In eighth grade, I had. Uh, it was around. That's why I bring it up. It was around middle school. Middle school, eighth grade. Was, no, I still got to bring in my picture from. I, it must have been sixth grade. Where I swear to God, I thought I was going to be. I was cool, and I, I, I put moose in my hair of all things. Yeah, Remember, you know moose. Oh, we used moose. Yeah, and I spiked my hair, but it looked like I want to see this picture. It was like a porcupine. It was like spiked everywhere, and yeah. then bangs. I had like oh, moose down bangs. Dude, everything was about bangs. <laughs> yeah, you know, when we grew up. Yeah, did you really? Did you have? Bangs yeah, I had too? big big. Bangs. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The wave, right? Yeah, it was a wave. Yeah. It was it was a oh, where you cut everything shorter and then over, because I still had to kind of go to the side. I, I was never like the straight back kind of deal. No, it was a it wave. It was the wave. Yeah. You used to wear your hat halfway on your head. Yeah, that too. And then you would fill that gap with this big ass fucking wave, and you would moose it to hold it there. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Can we all bring in? Our I actually think that I mean I'm, I see the kids rocking their hats like that again. So it's no it, way. Yeah, the wave of the hair maybe not so popular, but wearing your hat like that again is is back to put it up all, like all funny of course. yeah to where it's not all the way on your head i uh, i think back i have i think i have wore and pegged pants my hat with every 
I've, I've done every trend, like the hat kicked to the side, the backwards. dad, the flat bills, the backwards, the, the sideways. I mean, you, you, you ever the, do a visor, the bill flipped up visor. Mm. Ha- I mean, you I did the visor, I, oh, everything, no. but I used to wear a visor yeah. flipped upside down. I don't understand. <laughs> that was a, there yes, was a, I, I went through that. a trend that was like a, like an, I, you know, Nike, everything, Nike visor flipped upside down, yeah. Nike t-shirt, Nike shorts with two Nike socks into my yeah. Nike flip flops. Like that was, you're, every, you're like every marketer's wet dream. I know. Yeah, yeah, you're like, you're like, you know subscribes. I mean? to, yeah, he's gonna follow the yeah. next fad. Let's put it. Yeah. Dude, yeah. what was up with the visors? It didn't make any sense. Like, I just I yeah. want to wear a hat, but I want my the top of my head to be exposed. Right. I want to sunburn here, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I want to be able to see. Yeah, it was funny because uh, this morning when I'm comb- combing my son's hair or helping him comb it or whatever, I'm putting wax in it and everything. And he's like, "How come your hair just like combs itself? You know, like why does it just?" I remember <laughs> that's, that's years. I remember thinking that. I remember thinking yeah. that when I was a kid, I used to look at my dad's hair and I'd be like, I'm "Just there." Yeah, and I'd be like, "How do you you don't put anything?" Because when I was a kid, I used to have to put a shit ton mm-hmm. of uh, LA Looks gel. A shit ton. Oh, wow. you know LA Looks about gel. Yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I used to have to LA put a looks. whole bunch of it, and then on top of it, I'd have to use uh, Aquanet, and it, it would just freeze it into position. Yeah. And I used to look at my dad and be like, "Wow, why does it do that?" So now I'm like that. Now, now yeah. I don't, I don't. If I don't want to put anything in my hair, that's fine. I'll just do this with my hand, and it's in place. So my son's having this conversation with me, and I know why now. It's because I don't have as much hair. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, I had so much hair that it just wouldn't work. Go everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Now I've lost enough to where it just, yeah. you know, I, I'm just, not. Kind of stays. Yeah, I'm, I'm not fighting a lot of them as much as I was. Before. <laughs> yeah, that's why it only takes one. <laughs> yeah, just oh, it's, it's stuck in the position yeah. I want it to be. Anyway, did you guys see that article that uh, who shared it? I'm gonna find it right now. This is a great article. I, I have one too that I wanted to share. Though. Oh no, nobody shared this. I found this myself. Hmm. All right, ready for the title of the article? Yeah. Uh, the title of the article is "What Did We Get Stuck in Our Rectums Last Year?" So this is a, yeah. Yeah, a report. <laughs> I like this game. Oh yeah. my god. This is, this is a report taken from the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission's database of emergency room visits. And these are all descriptions that are, these are all verbatim. Okay, so ready for this? Now, before I get into what people had stuck in their uh, butt, which is the most common one, let's start with penis. Uh, apparently, people Stop. got things stuck inside their penises. Uh, went <sighs> to a, 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 so we'll, let's start off with the, the first one pipe cleaner. Oh. Somebody got a pipe cleaner stuck in there. Ugh. Yeah, someone oh. a, a straw. Well, you're. Oh, can we skip this part and go oh, to no, the other no. stuff? Oh, no, it gets straw? better. No. It gets better. Ready? A domino. A domino. <laughs> wow. Yeah, a domino. Uh, here's another one. That's good. Ugh. The back of the remote control. So someone the, had that stuck in their penis, apparently. What? Yeah, there's a lot of crazy Wait, stuff in here. The back of it? Yeah, like it goes in the battery. It covers the battery. Oh, I the guess. cover of it? And, oh. I, don't, I don't know. how. I didn't even know you could stretch it. I, I yeah. didn't know that either. Uh, um, so let's can. let's move on into the thank you uh, to the Rectum. vagina. Oh, the vagina. Yeah, things stuck inside a vagina. Small child's toy. That's one of them. A baton. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's another naturally. one. A cap of de- deodorant spray. I'm assuming she tried to use the whole deodorant in there, and uh, the cap got stuck. Yeah. Tiny plastic banana. So you know those things can get lost. You don't want to. <laughs> and then we'll move over to the rectum. Uh, Christmas ornament ball. That sucks. That's not a good thing to put up your butt. Don't those yeah. things break really easily? Exactly. Yeah, that's a scary thing. So, you know, I used to, it's a ticking time bomb right there. One of my old clients was this uh, this old salty surgeon. I loved him. And he would tell me stories about back in the day when he first would, you know, worked in emergency rooms. And he said that a guy once came in and had a jar, a glass jar stuck up his butt. Wow, and he said that they couldn't pull it out because it created a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Uh, so every time they try to pull it out, it was stuck harder. Yeah, and so you don't want to like pull everything out. So they had to drill a hole in the glass or something. He, they actually had to crack and break the glass <gasps> and, and pull the pieces out. Mm. Yeah, wow. Uh, this uh, another person got crack cocaine stuck up their their butt. That's, that's probably common. common. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's got to happen all the time. You know, I was con- so I, I had a surgeon friend of mine too growing up uh, his dad was a surgeon he used to tell stories about that same thing and how common it was the same story like every time like somebody had something stuck up their ass it was, it was like the same a peeled thing. carrot you know or it was like this peel <laughs> like it was already like you know ma- a manicured kind of a phallic uh vegetable and they're like yeah, I was I, I slipped and fell on it in the in in the kitchen, or you know, I was in the 
uh, produce section and <laughs> just fell and it's like come on <laughs> yes that's the, that's the, that's the, that's exactly what my client said no doctor we had doctor mind pump on he told these stories yeah and and, and you and oh, I, they, yeah. they, that's what he, he talked about that when they come in a lot of times they, set, they slipped and fell in the like shower. it's an, like it's an accident you got a hot wheels in your, your <laughs> rectum yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just, yeah. yeah i was like you're you know, already there and they're working on yeah, you how like, do you tell the honest. story like uh, you know I was, yeah i was taking a shower and uh, i was making yeah. a salad I'm a at the same time and uh, yeah, I just fell on the cucumber so right up there. <laughs> you just fell on it. Yeah, you have to think about like uh, the the what goes through someone's mind on the way to the emergency room. You got to come up with a yeah, really yeah. elaborate like yeah. What what story would you? I mean, nothing like, works. Can't. Yeah, nothing exactly. works. It's it's, it's it's so ridiculous. Just be honest. Yeah, you know. But uh, every every one of those stories has to start with uh, like, you yeah, won't believe this doctor. Get my freak on. Yeah. <laughs> won't believe. You're not gonna believe what <laughs> You're happened. Not believe this. Well, on, on a, a lighter note, I'm gonna I'm gonna share the one that Jackie sent over because uh, I do appreciate Jackie. I appreciate the the psychology stuff that you know I enjoy that. And Mark Manson, I think he's a great author. He wrote a, a blog on six toxic relationship habits most people think. Oh, I saw that. Are normal. So I'm going to I'm going to read them to you guys if you guys have examples I think that's that's great too not necessarily examples with your partner but where you've heard this or seen this Sure so six toxic yeah, speaking uh, on a friend of mine you, you have a friend I know somebody yeah, right I know, I know a guy six toxic relationship habits most people think are normal number 1 being uh the relationship scorecard right uh-huh. so that's mm-hmm. the you know keeping tally of all the times you fuck up and mm-hmm. then reminding you in an argument yeah that yeah, is yeah. the sixth time i've told you yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, i've yeah. initiated sex seven times you've only done it four <laughs> yeah yes so, yes you know I mean? right scorecard yeah. that's a fail epic fail if your partner does that not good uh two dropping quote unquote hints and other passive aggression this is a common one right like the Giving giving the hints yeah. to try and get your point across, or being very passive aggressive. Yeah. yeah, you know what, babe? What do you think of fat girls? You know what I mean? They're not that. They're not, that ha- they're not the hot, right? Anyway, so what's going on later? What are we having for dinner? <laughs> Good example. Yeah. Number three. Great. Uh, holding the relationship hostage. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a bad one. Right, right. That's that's a comp. Women hold sex a lot. That's their that's their 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 hostage. Or just threatening the relationship. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, four. Um, blaming your partner for your own emotions. This is probably one of the most common, mm. right? You make me feel this way, or it's your fault I feel this way, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, number five. I like how uh, you made a girl's voice when you said that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that. I was like, this oh, is my yeah. argument voice. Oh, okay. Mine's a little different. <laughs> yeah. uh, displays of loving jealousy. Probably one of the major reasons. Loving jealousy? Yeah. Like that's What's like, loving jealousy? Loving jealousy is like, I'm, I'm going through your phone because I love you and I want to uh, protect you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From, from all the pedophiles yeah. out there. You're right. Yeah. I'm really just wanting to see who the fuck you're DMing. Uh, six, buying the last one. Buying the solutions to a relationship problem. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that one, I mean, that one probably, uh, most people that are in a relationship that are allowing that to happen, the girls probably, or the guy, whoever is getting shit paid for them is... Probably aware of that and okay mm. with it. I would and think. so this is a, this was written by a legit like relationship expert. No, it's uh, written by an author, Mark Manson. Okay, because sometimes the one who who wrote the subtle art of not giving a fuck. Oh yeah, because sometimes I'll read articles like this and I like this is just clickbaity. Like yeah. like ten top traits like of buzz oh of, totally. an, of an empath. No, are you no. an empathetic person? I read the traits. I'm like, this is just somebody who's just no. I would I wouldn't read it unless yeah. I think it's. A, I think they're really good points. Actually, I yeah. think I think there's something. And, and I, I I'm sh- I'm sparing people from the. You know, underneath each one of those topics, it says what it is, so it explains in depth, and then why it's toxic, mm. and then uh, what you should do instead. So it's actually a really good article for people to read. I'll have Jackie put it in the show notes. Wow. Um, because I, I think I think communication is um, probably one of the things that m- that most people struggle with in any relationship is the ability to communicate to your partner uh, how you truly feel about things it's so crazy i was watching a show on netflix yesterday oh what is it it's about uh, tidying up your house something tidy oh yeah yeah. yeah. it's the 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 little asian girl the japanese lady yeah yeah which i love her she's adorable absolutely love her i I don't know if you doug have you seen this the tidy up lady yes kondo yes yeah yeah Yeah. have you seen the show on Netflix? i haven't i saw i put it on my list because i'm interested in in following that anyway it's really really good and the first episode was this couple with two kids normal family love actually nice people loving family last name is friend uh, i believe it or not the last name's friend and their house wasn't even that messy it was just a regular house with two kids and they had the regular challenges that couples have with with kids you know just they're, mm-hmm. they're little kids so they're busy two ships passing the night da, da, da. 
And you can, as you're watching that, you can see that they both love each other, but they're both so frustrated because they just, they just don't get each other. They're just not communicating with each other effectively. Hmm. And in the show, as they progress or whatever and organize the house, it, it kind of loosens things up. And they're talking about how they flirt and this. And that. But in the beginning of it, the guy was like, because the guy works a lot, like 50 to 60 hours a week. He said, and he goes, yeah. He goes, my family doesn't get the best of me right now because I'm so busy and stressed out. And then he pauses. And you could tell he hurt himself. He's like, wow, my family doesn't get the best of me. It was a really good, really, really good show. But yeah, mm. that mm-hmm. communication is everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, kind of on that topic about you know men and women, this study was published uh, early last year um, in, in sciencedirect.com. Uh, it's a great website that'll post some interesting studies. And this is uh, in this segment of evolution and human behavior. So the article is titled... Different Impacts of Resources on Opposite Sex Ratings of Physical Attractiveness by Males and Females. Okay, so basically what they did was is they, they combined images of male and female body shape with information on annual salary to elucidate the influence of economic status on the attractiveness ratings by the opposite sex. So how much the person earns per year how much of that impacts how attractive they're considered by the opposite sex? Oh, that's great. Okay. Wow. Now, well, I can't wait to hear the variance between men and women. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I already, you how big it? of a difference do you think it is? Oh, I think it's at least 60% different. Yeah. Uh, what that's about my you, guess. What about you, Justin? Yeah. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, he, cop- would, uh, he copies yeah, me. I would copy you. <laughs> on that one. You, should, you should do it like the game shows where they yeah. just go like one yeah, percent Oh, yeah. Higher. 61%. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with 61. Justin's closer. One dollar. <laughs> yeah. One dollar, Sal. They, in the article, we found that ratings of attractiveness were around 1,000 times more sensitive to salary for females rating males compared wow. to males rating females. Wow. <laughs> so uh, women are 1,000 times more sensitive to, uh, in terms of you know judging a man's attractiveness based on their annual salary versus men 1, to women. 1,000? Well, I mean, you know what? It, it makes sense, right? Evolutionarily, it makes sense, but it also makes sense from this standpoint. One- Women who see men who produce a lot. Who see men? L- l- <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. It's, it's, it's uh, a good connection you just made. Women who, you know, uh, they'll, they'll know a man and see that he's producing a lot, he's very successful. That, she's going to consider him very attractive. I'm sure, there's the evolutionary, uh, you know, e- explanation for it. You know, he could provide more resources and that kind of stuff. And there's also the obvious stuff. You know, it may say more th- other things about him, like he's confident and all these other things. And men, many times, will find a woman who, who earns more than him less attractive, which they didn't talk about in this article. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think part of that may be just the, the, the threat, right? Like he mm-hmm. feels like it's like less about himself because he sees a girl that, this girl that makes more money than him. Yeah. But anyway, it's a thousand times. Yeah. So if you're like, if you're just fucking <laughs> ugly, you know what I mean? If you're just an unattractive dude. You could increase your attractiveness Dude, a thousandfold. Just get successful. Getting really, yeah. yeah. Just getting real successful. <laughs> get, get busy. You know what hey, I mean? Get I, really busy. I saw you um, trolling the other day. I haven't caught you trolling in uh, a while. No, it wasn't. Yes, you were. What are you talking about? I caught you trolling. Who? You trolled Elliot Hulse. Oh, that wasn't trolling. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> His post was not good. I, I know. Yeah, you it was good. him yeah. like really nicely. No, he did it was this. nice. There's a nice little schooling uh he did this this feminism post uh, that um that he really didn't do a good job of communicating what i think he wants to communicate and i don't know exactly what he's trying to communicate but it's a picture first of all he picked the wrong picture it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a picture from like the 50s with a woman with an apron on she's getting a cake out of the oven or something and it's like and it says feminism is the idea that women are free when they serve their employers but slaves when they serve their husbands and children and then it, he's writing about how, and then in the post he writes about how, you know, feminism makes women unhappy, and uh, you know, if you're if you're they die miserable, childless, and alone, surrounded by a thousand cats. I mean, it's really, it's really not. You know, he's he's kind of not trying to communicate what he's you know what he's trying to say. I think. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but anyway. So I just wrote underneath it that that's not what feminism is all about. Feminism was about. You know, women couldn't vote. They could. They had to jump through legal loopholes for property rights. And the key is to give people to treat them like individuals. So if they want to do something, then they should be able to. And yeah. pursuing their own happiness, whatever that means. And if that means that they are a stay-at-home mom, then that's great. If it means that they work, then that's great too. But the other thing that irritated me was the whole, you know, serve serve their employers and you know slaves to their whatever. When you work for someone, that's let's be let's be honest here. When you're working for someone, it's a mutual beneficial 
agreement. It's voluntary. Mm. I don't care how much you hate your employer. You're there because you're getting something. Right. Otherwise, you wouldn't be there. So if it wasn't benefiting you, you would be gone. So you know, a lot of times people look at their employers like they're these you know slave drivers or whatever. But let's let's be honest here. Yeah, they're, you're getting something for it. If you could get something better, that's where you would be. But you can't. So fucking be cool with it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, the response was kind of whatever. Yeah, you, well, he didn't give you a response. You got a lot of you got a lot of love though. I saw. Yeah, that I think he got what he wanted from that post though. I think he got. I mean, it, it, yeah, four of- four or five times the views and likes and and comments. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty divisive way of putting it you yeah. know and like the way that he presented it for sure and what? i think i think i mean that that's the thing is i think you can challenge it on both ends and like you, you made a good point of it being an individual preference thing like that's that, that like uh, there there is a stigma to for a while there for stay-at-home moms and um and i think that that definitely needed to be challenged uh you know but but then again there there's there's great benefit into you know independence and and being able to pursue whatever the fuck you want to pursue. So it's it's um you know it's 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 a family's choice at that point. Like well, it I, works I, best for your dynamic I mean, is, of your family. I mean, Katrina and I have discussed this, and personally, I want her to stay home, but I also yeah don't like care what. But what she decides is up to her. That's how I feel. It's like. I would I would love for her to stay and and be home with the kids and shit I would if if she made more money than I made then I would do that I don't give it's yeah. not a it's not a sexist thing it's like the 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 partner at the two of us that's able to supply enough income for us to live the lifestyle that we like to live it just makes sense yeah, yeah. just it does just and so but you know she's also pretty adamant about not now I think things would change when when she has a baby and maybe she she would feel differently but she was raised by a mother who you know, worked a full time job and built a business when she was a kid. So she's used to that and she's okay with that. And I'm okay with it too. But I, I don't think there's anything wrong with, with wanting that. No, it's like right. running a company. You know, you, you have people taking over certain roles. And look, if everybody did everything in a company, a company would be run terribly. Yeah. You can't do it you that way. You can't be the multiple hat person. No. And in, in a life, raising a family and having a life together is a lot of stuff. There's yeah. the, of course, there's the earning money part, but then there's the managing the personal life and the home. And the, if you have children, children take up a big chunk of time as well. And their development, uh, in ter- like all kinds of uh, factors there of how you want your kids to be raised. Well, the best person that's going to raise your kids is you yeah so you got to think about that. it just makes sense that you would divide and conquer right okay i got this side don't worry about it i'll handle right. it you got that side. and now the root the truth is a lot of people don't have that luxury yeah a lot of people you know have to both work because they can't one person that's the can't reality these days yeah. that's the reality de- these days the only the, the you know feminism has gotten a bad rap lately and i think it has to do with just the the them being more against things than for things, right? They're they're more like, you see a lot of them hating on men or saying that, you know, it's all about men being oppressive and um, that women have to work and this and that. It's like, no, no, no. The whole idea behind feminism was that that there's that women can choose to do whatever they want, whatever's going to make them happy. Mm -hmm. And being equal doesn't mean being the same. Being equal means we all have the same liberties and rights and that we all should be respected as individuals. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to be about. But there's... There's definitely been challenges with, and because he also wrote in there how, uh, you know, women's uh, ratings of happiness has, has plummeted over the last few decades, but so has men's. Yeah. It, it's not. I don't think it has to do with the fact that the uh, feminism. I think it has to do with the fact that we're just kind of losing our purpose, and and you know, the family's not becoming the center of our lives like it used to be, mm-hmm. and you know, family. It's one way to really get a lot of purpose, you know? And so I, th- I think that's really the issue. I don't think it has anything to do with feminism. No, so anyway, no, I, I read that. that and was like, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gloves so. are off. Dude, did you guys see the 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 rechargeable, like, no, you can literally recharge it, unplug it, juve red light, the small ones. Did you guys oh, see that, that they're coming out with Is that? it out or is it going to come yeah. out? I, I think it's, is it out yet? Let me see here. I, I, so I think immediately they have a waiting I, list for it right now. Okay. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because I didn't think it was yeah. out yet. I heard that they it was coming. Dude, it's the medical grade LEDs. It's the same like quality that you get in their other lights. It's supposed to be cheaper than anything they have too, right? Yeah, it's inexpensive because it's smaller, wireless, rechargeable. It's handheld, so you could travel with it. I think this thing's awesome. Now, here's why I like a travel form mm. of this uh, of this product if especially if you travel uh, especially if you travel long distance yeah. using photo biomodulation is a great way to help overcome uh, jet lag yep it's a fantastic way to do it 
um, shine this on yourself when the sun is supposed to be up and when the, and, you know, and, and of course wear blue blockers and all that stuff when the sun goes down. So let's say you're in a hotel room in a new country and you're waking up, you know, when you're supposed to or whatever, mm-hmm. but you're jet lagged, sit under one of these things or shine this thing on your face for 15 minutes and it should help with the... I whole. remember when we... For That's one of exactly the, how I would use it. One of the first interviews that we, we had with Ben Greenfield, that mm-hmm. was like his go-to hack. And I think it was one of those interviews that we did where we were talking about all these little fitness hacks or that we've hacked into and he's talking about how when he travels that going and finding uh, an infrared sauna is like his go-to thing. Yep. Like, sauna, sunlight, you know, blocking out the, the light when you're when it's supposed to be dark, like all these Yeah, things. and then also like getting on uh, whatever time zone you're in, like on that schedule of eating as well. So Yes, that's so, a big one. Yeah, just so that way, you know, you have that process and your digestive tract and everything else is, is on point with that too. Yeah, apparently, I didn't know this until uh, like maybe two years ago or last year, that your your digestive system runs on a circadian rhythm as well. Yeah. So if you're eating in the middle of the night of the new place you're supposed to be in, your body, your your digestive system, it's hard. It slows down the the, the adjustment to the time schedule because your body thinks you're you're supposed to be awake. So what you want to do is, let's say you're on the plane and where you're going is nighttime, even though you're, where you're leaving is daytime. Don't eat anything. Get your body used to you know get that circadian rhythm to kick in. And adapt faster, and then of course the now that you can use this this red light. You well, know. You, speaking of Juve, did you guys? So Rachel came in the other day. Rachel takes care of all of our accounts and <clears throat> keeps us up to speed on like what's new, kind of like this. I didn't realize that they have a sixty day uh, money back guarantee thing. That I just learned too. Yeah, yeah right. I didn't know that. So what I would suggest because I, I, I get messages all the time about this particular technology. Like, is it really worth it? Does it work? It sounds kind of whatever. Fucking get it and use it for 60 days and see for yourself. Yeah, yeah. if you, know, if you, they, if you, if you use it for two months consistently, you'll see a difference. You have to use it consistently. That, no, that's the key that I know even now. Like, when I fall off, I can I can see the difference in my skin. I can see the difference in the thickness of my hair. All the things that I notice from the benefits from it, yeah. I notice if I don't do it. So that that's, that's the one... That's the one thing that you have to take into consideration that it's not a, oh, use this for a week and then you're done and then it fixes everything for you. Well, I like the the, the term medical grade LEDs because I know that they've separated themselves in the market in terms of like, you know, the quality of the type of output that they have. So, you know, versus like other things you can buy off Amazon for cheaper and these. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that they're bringing an option that's a little bit more affordable uh, you know, for people to give it a shot. Dude, speaking of Amazon, another article Jackie sent, which she's winning the article war with all the with the rest of the staff. By the way, you guys pick up your game. This this <laughs> she knows us the best. Dude, that's why. Am, so Amazon is going to just they're already dominating. Okay, I, what was that last statistic I read? Was something like mm. they well, represented he's getting a divorce? Too, so yeah, that's yeah. another. So we could talk about that too in a second. There was a. They, I what, didn't know that. What were they yeah. doing? Like seventy percent of all e-commerce or eighty percent anyway. Check out what they're going to do now and tell me that this isn't going to just murder their competition. Amazon is piloting a program that's going to let brands send free samples to consumers. So what they're going to do is Amazon, through Amazon Prime, knows your purchasing history, oh, knows God, what you like, so what you smart. don't like, and then they're just going to send you samples. Mm-hmm. Free shit. It's mm-hmm. just going to come to your door. <laughs> You're Knowing that, let's say, you order you know, uh, protein powders or you order supplements or you order hair products, whatever, and they know what you're kind of into... You're going to get a free sample delivered to your door of another product, and Jeez. and it's free. You can't tell you me that's not fucking free. Yeah. How do you compete? And imagine how it's probably going to come with an offer. Like, yeah. hey, you of know, course. 50% off, off if you order today Brilliant. on Amazon Prime. Brilliant. Fucking, you know what's going to, so think of all the shit this is going to do. This is going to create major competition yeah. amongst all these brands on Amazon because they're going to start stealing each other's customers through this type of process. Mm-hmm. So you're going to start getting free shit left and right. This is gonna be freaking. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. Hooray for consumers! <laughs> oh, this is the, one of the best things that I've ever heard of. I think it's gonna be. I, I can't think of why it wouldn't succeed. Now, what's know. this about? Bezos is getting a divorce. Yeah, I'm his yeah. wife. Twenty five years of marriage. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because like I, you meet, you say Amazon, and, and I say, you know, like I, he's getting a divorce. Like Amazon is getting a divorce. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's like no, it's it's, it's Bezos, bro. But, that's yeah. It's I don't know what that's gonna look like in terms of. So is it? 
Cal, he's not California, so what, what are the well, laws in terms of? Because it's half here. Right? Doesn't matter. Twenty five years they were married. Uh, he and he, he married his yeah, wife. So that's got to be like half a year before they started Amazon. So she gets half. Yeah. So he's a what is he worth? One hundred sixty billion dollars or something. I wonder like that? What, yeah. So that's that's gonna be this will be the most expensive. That is a payout. Divorce of all time. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? It will go down as that, huh? Probably. Yeah. Think about it. Who's it, who's more than that? If she gets half, she's going to get billions for sure. Billions and billions. Now, well, how does that work? Because that's what the company is valued. It, it's not that he's a, he's not that liquid. So, She'll get half his shares, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Or the to, value of those Right. Shares. It'll have to be something like that, yeah. right? Because you won't be she won't be able to... I doubt he has enough liquid cash to cash out what he's valued at. I don't know. Yeah, but, I don't know. So he's got a personal stake in Amazon estimated estimated to be worth one hundred and sixty billion dollars. That's what it says right oh here. Oh my god, that's so much yeah. money. So I don't know if because she's gotta get uh she's gonna get half of the value of them or something like that, right? I don't know. Now, I mean the way I look at it is this. I mean, they were married for twenty five years. He I'm got sure married the judge beforehand. would be confused on that one. Yeah. He's well like, he's like this is so much my calculator doesn't yeah. go this high. <laughs> it exploded. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> it doesn't fit that many zeros. Do you, do you know who's gonna uh, make, might as well be infinity. You know who's yeah. gonna make out point. like bandits over this huh. all the lawyers and shit to figure that out <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah. like we need some more time yeah because because they're amicable on the clock apparently they're amicable like oh okay well yeah. maybe they won't need a bunch of lawyers oh you still do how complicated is that yeah. think about that well i would hope that him or her would just would agree on something like yeah what's the di- okay 160 billion like yeah, are you really gonna b- balk over you know a few different billion? <laughs> what are you gonna do with all that money? Yeah, yeah, you know that. I think if someone were to, okay, think about this for a second. If someone were to cash you out yeah. on eighty billion, you may spend the next five years counting it with a team. Yeah, like that's yeah. literally how how long it, but, how long would it take you to count? Like, is she gonna start? A company how long now? would it take you to count that many one hundred dollar bills? Okay, but understand this. They could be super amicable. They could literally decide between the two of them what you get, what I get. You still need a team of lawyers to go through all that legal mumbo jumbo to figure out how you divide it, how you get what. Right. Okay, you need to remain the shareholder of Amazon, but how's she going to get the valuation? What that's going to look like? It's still you're still looking at hundreds of hours it's, it's of messy. lawyers. Yeah, he's gonna the lawyers are gonna make a shit. You're rich if you're the lawyer dealing with this divorce. You're gonna make oh, a yeah. you're gonna make a hundred something thousand massive payout yeah, just on some basic stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. Crazy, crazy wow, stuff. That is crazy. Speaking of uh, uh, making out on money, so check out these statistics I just got uh, to this morning from you know Health IQ, Health IQ, the life insurance company. I didn't know this. Apparently, if you can run an eight minute mile without stopping, you have a thirty five percent lower risk of all cause mortality. There's also a significant risk of death, all cause, if you could just deadlift your body weight. How cool is that? I saw it's funny you bring that up because I actually uh, screenshotted Health IQ is I, I think they're I think they're really on to something the way they're marketing. Yeah. And I saw on Instagram today I was scrolling through and they popped up in my feed and I took a picture of it and it's actually very similar to what you just read. Let me see where I here it is. What does right it here. say? It says, says run a nine minute. It says run a nine minute mile. Get one million in life insurance from thirty six dollars a month. Yeah, yeah. Th- mm-hmm. these are the kinds of things. I this is pretty, why I, I thought I, that's pretty cool. I keep telling my, I, I you know, I have uh, family members that are really into fitness, and I keep telling them like, when you go to life insurance, the kind of stuff they look at is do you smoke? Do you you know what's your blood lipid levels? How much you weigh? That kind of stuff. And health IQ does that too. But they also go do shit like that. Like okay, mm-hmm. how fast can you run the mile? You know, how much can you squat? What can how, how often do you lift weights? How lift how often do you do cardio? Do you meditate? Yeah. Like this is the shit that they factor in. Like to, measurable things that healthy people do uh, to stay and prevent uh, disease. Uh, otherwise, you pay more. That's the body. Yeah, like because yeah. c- c- I've gotten life insurance before, and because I'm heavy, not you know I'm not fat, but I have muscle. Uh, life insurance companies, I've had to go back and forth with them. I like, wonder how much more accurate it is for them to do it that way, and how much more successful they are because they do that, which is kind of cool. The consumer wins because it's like, hey, I'm a healthy person who does all these things. Why do I not get benefits from it? So yeah. if you're somebody who exercises, then it's a, it's kind of a no-brainer oh. company to go through. Dude, it has to be the best people to, to, to insure. You, it has to. If I'm a life insurance company, I would love to insure a bunch of fit and healthy people because I'm probably yeah, going to make a money. Right? They yeah. make their money on you not dying. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah every yeah. time they don't want you to die. That's that. So it's basically it's a bet. That's what life insurance is. The life insurance 
figures out what they think you're, uh, you know, if you're going to die or whatever, how much it's going to cost them to make a profit right. off that. That's all it is. It's in their best interest, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah. you to to keep being healthy. So I, I think it's it's nice that they're finally catching on to that, and I would love to see where the you know the progression of this goes. Yeah, I want to see more things geared around uh, fit and healthy people because I'm sick and tired of paying for and subsidizing for all the unhealthy people out there. Like, yeah. with, you know, with all these other insurances that you pay for. It needs to be more. There needs to be a segment for responsible, healthy people who take care yeah, of themselves. I got my shit together. Yeah, like I don't want to pay money for the guy over there that smokes and whatever. I don't want to have to pay more because of that. I would love you to pull all of us together, right? Fit and healthy people. Just deal with us so that I can pay, uh, you know, lower prices or whatever. And they did that with life insurance. I think they're the only ones too that are really yeah. going that route. So. As far as I know, Doug would know better than anybody because I know yeah. he's been in that world. I feel yeah. like it, this this isn't really much related, but uh, Carl's Jr. just started promoting this meatless the vegan burger vegan burger i saw what? it did you see that yeah I no saw it. i saw it, it yeah it's just it's it, fail yeah i just won't do well it, well it's interesting that is there really like a demand for that for people like to to seek out fast food like specifically uh doing only the vegan diet i think that Maybe it's because it's it's been around long enough now that people are like uh, the New Year's around and people have all this motivation to try like a diet out. And so it's getting all this attention. Oh, I, think, I think so. I mean, you know, the cool thing to Google, Doug, is uh, the how many people actually buy salads from McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, that would be interesting. Well, yeah, I, I think you'd be surprised. They on- don't make money. They have their core audience of people that buy their products or their core customers are these consumers that come two or three days a week. These are not people concerned about their health. And on, But to, 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 to that point, there's a lot of vegans that don't give a shit about their health either. Yeah. They, they, they're vegans because they don't want to eat animal products, but they're still overweight and they, they like no, eating chips and point. shit like that. Yeah, you know? it's, they don't really care or consider the processed part of that, like all this food that they're you know, replacing with. Mm-hmm. Now, now, here's the thing that I would think about. If I'm a, uh, if I'm a, a vegan, I'm a hardcore vegan and I'm very... Um, what's the word? Uh, you know, like, like my morality is based around that. Based around that, and I go to, would I even go to a Carl's Jr. knowing that they serve so much meat, even if I'm not ordering it? You right. Because I mean? you're still giving them money, and you have, I mean, you're grilling it on the same grill. I imagine. No, I think you, it's is different. it different. Yeah, I okay. Think different. You I was gonna say to that's <laughs> it would have to be different, right? It'd be hilarious. Like, you know, wow, uh, why well, does this taste like meat? Well, yes <laughs> and no, but let's let's get in the mind of the the kid that's behind there. That's like some high school who kid, doesn't give a shit. Who doesn't give a shit about your vegan burger, yeah. and is just gonna yeah. you know grill it in with all the rest of the oils and sure residue he, from. Sure, all he his, gets fired well, for that. You, you yeah. saw that. You saw what he. Uh, you think so? What Doug just pulled up a McDonald's salad with the dressing has more calories than a big. Oh Mac. yeah, it's over a thousand calories. <laughs> yeah, they're not in there to get healthy. <laughs> I remember yeah. the first time I had uh, I drove yeah, I through that. to get a Jack in the Box salad. Cause Jack in the Box McDonald's, all the same thing. I went to Jack in the Box to get a salad. This was when I was a trainer in my early twenties, and I remember getting it and then looking at the looking up because this was before. Uh, fast food restaurants had to put the macronutrients on their food. So I would have to go home. In fact, I think I used calorieking.com back then, or I had a book. Oh, I remember Calorie King. Yeah, right. That was a go-to yeah, place as a trainer before all these places had to put it on there. And I remember coming home and and looking at the breakdown for the salad, I thought, holy shit, I should have had two Jumbo Jacks instead. Yeah. <laughs> I would it would have been healthier. Yeah. Now a lot of that is because of the the dressing. I mean, they give you like a cup yeah. of ranch dressing or whatever and croutons and all yeah, that. Yeah, and the cheese that's pound that's yeah, all. Or over. you do what I did and just dip your nuggets in the ranch, oh, yeah. and then you're all you're all good. Yeah. I haven't nuggets. had of all of the fast food restaurants the one that I haven't had. Like the longest period I've been without. I, okay, so I haven't gone to fast food. Yeah, when's the last time one of you guys drove through a McDonald's, a Jack in the Box, I, Carl's Jr., Taco Bell? It's, it's got to be a decade at least. I don't even remember. At least 10 years, if not more. At least. I've gone to In and Out. You know, that's the one if I'm going to do something that's semi fast food or whatever. Oh, yeah. I don't care. Actually, that. yeah, Five Guys. I, I can. Sure. In and Out and Five Guys are, yeah. are, are gourmet. Yeah. No, but you're talking about the the. Those are gourmet. You're talking yeah. about the, king, <laughs> the kings you, of fast food. You, I love you, it. you got that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I haven't gone through Leah yeah, like one of the the big. I know I did with Katrina when we first dated. She caught me like she was with me in the the marijuana time, right? So when I was in the cannabis clubs, I was eating some fast food. So I, I that and 
I think Jack in the Box was probably my go to. The tacos at Jack in the Box was like a go to place for sure. Um, and that was eight years ago. Yeah. Well, my I remember eating the colossal burger oh, there. Yeah. It was like bacon patty, bacon patty, bacon patty. Yeah, we don't mess around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we only put bread on it so your hands don't get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. a great slogan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know they should fucking pay me. Yeah. I, uh, um, I I still have fond memories though of McDonald's French fries. I haven't had them in ten years. Oh, they're still good. But uh, I feel like yeah. they're the best French fries that exist. It's like angel dust. Yeah. Yeah. They, it, it, whenever they're not profitable or they're they're like you know low in their profits, they just start highlighting the fries again. You yeah. Notice that? Because they have the best. By far, that that gets everybody back hooked. Yeah, because it is it is one of those. One of these days, I'm gonna they get have mastered that. Just French fries. I'm just gonna get French fries. Try to get French fries. Just just I just want a bunch yeah. of French fries. I, I, mean, should, I never liked McDonald's. You want to get them? Ugh. I yeah. feel like I'll be. I'll feel like you were never a McDonald's fan. Never. So in in order, your your top three fast foods when you were eating fast food. Oh, mm, well, Carl Junior than Wendy's probably. Oh, Wendy's. Yeah. Oh my God, I hated Wendy's. Really? Oh, I loved Wendy's. Oh, unless you're getting a frosty and dipping the French fries. That's well, because I was a chicken sandwich guy. I wasn't as much of a uh, a burger guy. For God, that. for me, my thing was, this was my meal. This was my bulking meal. Now, remember, I was 16 or 17, so I was a kid, and I was really trying to put on mass, and I thought it was all about eating as much as possible. So I'd lift weights at the 24-hour fitness, and go go hard or whatever, work out like an idiot because I didn't know any better. Then I'd drive to McDonald's, and I'd get a double quarter pounder with cheese, supersized meal, and a twelve piece piece nugget in ranch <laughs> dressing, and and uh, uh, which uh, what is it? An ice cream? What are they called? Uh, oh yeah, a flurry, not a, fl- a flurry. McFlurry. A McFlurry. Yeah. That would be my meal. Yeah. Wow. And if it wasn't that, then when I was like really got hip to like, oh, I think I could push my my food even more. Then I'd go to a hometown buffet, and uh, make, yeah, make myself sick. Wow. Another gross one. That was yeah, it. Mickey D's probably the top for me, dude. I, I mm-hmm. it, that I had the most. You know, Mickey D's, and then probably. Um, Mickey D's. Yeah, Mickey D's. That's their Je- cool name. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Say it really cool. Yeah. Mickey D's, so McDonald's, and then Jack in the Box when I was older because the top – I think that was when I started drinking, right, my my mid-20s, early 20s, mid-20s, uh, you know, nothing like uh, two, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Because remember, Jack in the Box was the first one to open up 24 hours. They were the ones that catered to degenerates. They were the, the brilliant. Stoners. Yes, yeah, they, they were brilliant. Yes, they catered to the degenerates. That's right. <laughs> yep. And I was one of those, right? Po- at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning after the bars or what about that? Oh, yeah. Heading you over. Can you imagine if they just posted up a DUI check station oh, at oh, one of those God. fucking yes. <laughs> drive throughs yeah, I remember I'm, assholes walking like 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 four or five guys. Like, yeah. Like they, we were all in the car. They were not in a car. They were walking up through the drive through the drive through I've done that before. Demanding burgers. I've done that before for oh, sure. Man. When you're so drunk and you don't want to get a DUI, so you you walk to the the next you know Jack in the Box. Yeah. So Jack in the Box, and then probably Taco Bell as a kid. I couldn't eat Taco Bell as I got older. It, Taco one, Bell never made, filled me up. It though. was the first thing that I think I got a real. Into- yeah. yeah, no, you had to go. I'd spend you, twenty dollars at Taco Bell. A lot of money. Yeah, and I'd be like, you had to get two numbers and a side thing. Those, Everything. Those bean burritos were violent. I remember that. <laughs> That, that was a violent experience. <laughs> they were like all cheese, dude. It was dude, all it, cheese, four beans, yeah, and tortilla. All, yeah, and this really it's more, like a, ke- it's more like a quesadilla with a couple beans in it. Yeah, it's just all beans. <laughs> and they're tor- the, 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 the the burrito. I was ate them like, like crazy though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Qua- Qua- Maps Qua- Today's Qua is brought to you by Maps Anabolic. If you're looking to maximize your overall muscle and strength, Maps Anabolic is the perfect place to start. With a full 30-day money-back guarantee, there is absolutely zero risk. So what are you waiting for? Go to mindpromedia.com and get started today. It's the motherfucking qua. The eagle has landed. Quee-qua. First question is from Kirby SM. What ab exercises are your favorites for building out your abs? That's a good question. I like the way it's it's worded. Building out your abs because I think there's a lot of core exercises that I find to be awesome, um, superior ones that I recommend everybody do to build stability in the core, to give someone a strong midsection that supports their low back, their stuff. lower back, and their and their upper and lower extremities. Because really, if you think about it, you, the the parts of your body that connect to the world and that move things and move your body are your arms and your legs and the the upper and lower body are connected by the by the core muscles and those muscles need to be strong enough 
to support that kind of movement. So from an athletic standpoint, you want to have a strong core so that you can generate a lot of force with your hips and with your upper body for certain movements. And there's exercises that are phenomenal for stability, but then there's also exercises that are phenomenal for aesthetics, you know, for like building the abs. And I learned this later on in my career. It was uh, it was probably, I want to say my mid-20s. By this point, mid to late 20s, I had gotten gone through a couple cycles of getting lean. I was able to get my body fat down to like 8% body fat, which is which is relatively lean, right? Single Single digit body fat percentage. And I never really had a six pack, even at 8%, unless I really flexed my abs hard and then mm. I could see them. But then when I was relaxed, you know, I had a flat midsection, but I didn't have like, I was very envious of guys who they would relax and they just had these bricks, you know, abs. And I was like, God, I want that. I want my abs. To, I want to have a six pack without having to flex them. And I would do all, you know, I do hundreds of, you know, crunches and planks and all this, you know, stabilization exercise. And nothing was happening. I would, I would get, you know, my abs were, they were developed, but they weren't really popping out like the rest of my body. Um, and then I don't remember what it was. I, I, I think I, I don't remember what article I was reading, but it dawned on me that if I want my abs to really be visible, I have to build them. Well, very abs. few people strength train abs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very few people do that. We just, I think we abs, don't think like that. abs and calves are both these, these two areas that I know for many years, you know, I was under the belief that, oh, because these are fast twitch fibers that we should hit it with high repetitions and it supposedly responds better mm -hmm. to high reps than lower reps. And it's false because what we we tend to do is we always tend to train that way when we're training abs. You do all these crazy bike abs and 15, 30 reps and you superset. But when was the last time you did a really controlled ab exercise for five to six reps mm -hmm. and actually do it with some heavy weight. Now, I know that with that comes more risk. So if you have low back issues and you don't have a strong core, I don't advise somebody going out and lifting really heavy weight with their abs. But if you want to build blocky abs, one of the best things that you can do that you're probably not doing is strength training. Treat them like any other body part you yeah. want to you want to develop. And it, you're and you're right. You're right about the uh, the the reason why people don't do resistance with their abs. Partly is because they don't know that they should to build them. Mm -hmm. The other part is they have they're so weak and they have such poor control that going heavy doesn't make any sense. It just turns into hip flexor right. exercise yeah. all right. day long. Yeah, and I, I think I. It's interesting to me to think about that because going up through the gym, you just didn't see a lot of people like really strength training their abs other than like the high reps or the stabilization exercises. I know for me, like just unknowingly, I, I knew that uh, uh, increasing load for like doing rotational exercises was very beneficial. And I, and I saw great uh, carryover to that and it really helped to kind of um, build up uh, a strong, powerful body for me uh, with all my lifts and also like out on the field, but it still didn't even register to me that like building up my abs, just like I would build up my arms, my chest, my legs, like any other part of my body. It, it, it was not part of, um, you know, a thought process mm -hmm. of mine. Yeah. It, like, let me put it to you this way. If you have a very muscular back with lots of muscle on it, it's going to look leaner even if you're at a higher body fat percentage. And if you have no muscle on your back and you're lean, your back's not going to look as lean because you don't have the muscle to show. So building out the muscles of your midsection will make you look leaner at higher body fat percentages to the point now where for me to have a six pack before, I had to get down to eight, maybe 7% body fat. Now I have a six pack at about 11% body fat. And it's mainly because my abs now stick out more. So it's, it's much more visible. You know what it was too, though? A lot of strength athletes and a lot of like power lifters that would scoff a lot at the, the core and ab work because they're lifting so much weight, you know, and they're mm -hmm. stabilizing all this weight with their core anyways. But again, this goes back to just stabilizing all the time. That's all you're really, you know, contracting and working isometrically these, uh, this muscle group. Yeah. So, th so consider this, uh, when you look at the very basic muscles of the core, <laughs> And we're talking aesthetics now because we're talking about building the, the, you know, this guy says building out the abs, right? You have your abdominal muscles and then you have your internal and external oblique. So those are the, those are the main aesthetic portions of the, the core when people are talking about having a nice six pack and midsection, right? So let's talk about the abs for a second. When you look at where the abs attach, the, the lower rib cage and your pelvis, 
when they contract, they flex you at your lumbar spine. So if you look at your back, if you look at a side picture, side of, of somebody standing up straight, they will round the lower back when they contract. And when they stretch, they extend the lower back. That's where, the, that's where you bend when you're working your abs, not the hips. So just because you're bending forward in an exercise, like you're doing sit-ups and you're bending forward, if you're not flexing at the lumbar spine and you're just flexing at the, at the hips, you're working the hip flexors. Now, your abs may be stabilizing you, but you're not working them through a full range of motion. So first understand that because a lot of times I'll take people through workouts and they'll say, okay, I want to build out my abs and I work out my core all the time, but I don't have you know visible abs. And I'll say, okay, let's look at your how strong your actual abs are. And I'll put them on a physio ball. The reason why I put them on a physio ball is if you get in the right position and you stabilize your hips, it encourages lumbar extension and flexion because it's round, right? So your lower back's on the top of the ball. You can wrap your your low back over the top of the ball, and then you have to crunch over the ball while keeping your hips up so you're not rocking on the ball. And I'll have people do that, and with no resistance, they'll ba- barely be able to get 8 to 10 reps without any resistance because they're actually working through this full range of motion. Oh, I, I love to teach the the perfect sit-up and the, the visual of rolling the spine up, mm-hmm. I think, is what helped me learn how to to pull your hip flexors out of the movement because it's just natural if you fold the body to to want the hip flexors to kick in and help mm-hmm. out. So I like to take somebody and and put them on the floor. And we've done by the way, we've done YouTube videos on all the things we're talking about right oh, now. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we've got a, a set an ab section on the YouTube channel on Mind Pump TV where we've actually addressed all this. And I believe you also wrote a free guide on yep. abs, didn't you? Yep, so yep. yeah. So a lot of this information we have already out there in detail for for the person who's asking this question, but I personally love the perfect setup and and getting somebody laying flat on the the ground with their knees bent right at like forty five, and then first getting them to do a back press right so that right away starts to take the hips out so, so pre- you flatten your lower back against the floor right right you squeeze you press your low back flat against and then you just roll the spine all the way up way harder than it looks oh my god mm-hmm. it's hard it's hard to do just a couple of those you know you mm-hmm. do two or three of them but that really just shows you like you know how weak your ab- your abdominals are and and how much of when you do a lot of these other exercises that you are using momentum and hip flexors to contract or you're just stabilizing right like one of the most one of the most effective yet most difficult to do properly exercises is the hanging leg raise. It's also the one that I see the most common one done wrong. Yeah. When I see people do leg raises in the gym, it's like you're all you're doing is you're working your hip flexors. You're mm-hmm. at, and they'll be like, "Oh, I feel it in my abs." Yeah, cuz they're stabilizing your spine, but you're not working your abs through a full range of motion. When you do a real leg raise, that is a long lever, you know, full reverse crunch, mm-hmm. and that is a lot of resistance. If your legs are a lot of resistance, especially when you stretch them straight out when you don't have your knees bent. So like for me, for example, even at my peak when I was really hitting my abs hard, I would be able to do maybe 12 full reps max with of a leg raise. And I know people who do, oh, I do knee tucks and leg raises. I'll do like 30 of them. It's like, no, no, yeah, let me watch your form. Like if you do it properly with the way a leg raise should look is your legs, obviously you're straight, right? You're straight up and down at first. You're bringing your legs up, but then you're tucking your tailbone and you're mm-hmm. curving your low back. You're literally rounding your body at the top while maintaining straight legs. You can't do that unless you're really, really, really strong. Mm -hmm. So if you're just getting into trying to build your abs, you're probably not going to be able to do that. In fact, I would have you start with a regular reverse crunch on a flat bench where you tuck your legs and just roll your butt up off the bench with your legs tucked, by the way. Don't shoot your legs straight up in the air or kick your legs behind your head because you're just using momentum. Roll back and then roll back down and see what happens. So my favorite for me personally, what really built my abs out the most were the hanging leg raises done properly. And then just good old fashioned Roman chair sit ups with at one towards the end when I got really strong, I was able to put a 25 or a 45 across my chest and I would tuck my tailbone at the top, squeeze my abs. So now I'm in that kind of that lumbar, you know, flex position. And then I'd slowly roll back, extend my back, and then roll my way up. And man, that made my abs. I like that about. exercise. That's probably one of my top ones too, because what I like about that is that you teach people to start in this kind of round I could put you in that position in this like rounded position first and teach you like you know squeeze your abs stay rounded now I want you to slowly open up and there'll come a point when you're slowly opening up if you take your time really slow where you feel it 
go from your abs to now your low back and your hip flexors. Yeah. Like when you start to let go, and then that's where you kind of cue them to, to close back. to close back up. So I I think that is a a, a great exercise to, mm-hmm. to to teach somebody. Again, I think it's another youtube video that you've done on the the other one too is uh you know let's talk about planks for a second i love planks it's a good stabilization exercise but a lot of people if you're trying to hit your abs with them a lot of people aren't really doing them the right way um when you're at the top of a plank you want to tuck your tailbone you don't want to have this arch in your low back when you Mm -hmm. see a lot of people do a plank and they have this arch in their low back where the butt's kind of sticking up a little bit um no no tuck your tailbone and crunch your abs now hold the plank and that's where you start to feel it in your abs. And then if you want to take it a step further, you do what are called active planks, which are an excellent ab building exercise. And what an active plank is, you start at the top of a plank with your tailbone tucked, and then while keeping your upper body positioned up above your on, on your elbows, slowly lower your hips until they lay down on the floor, relax. And when you relax on the floor, you're going to go into this natural back arch position. And then pick your hips back up and then tuck your tailbone again mm-hmm. at the top. So you're making reps out of it. You're yeah. making reps out of it. And you're really, and I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't want to work out my abs or my obliques. I'm afraid of getting a bigger waist. Don't worry about that. That's so silly. Um, very few people can build muscles that big to where their waist is big because they have such big, you know, no. core muscles. Very rarely. I mean, I, I can probably count on maybe two fingers people I've actually seen where I'm like, whoa, those abs might be a little too big for your body <laughs> but it's it's almost never happened all that it ever happens is you end up getting yeah. looking just defined now i mean let's talk about athletics for a second let's talk about the obliques yeah I, they're they're huge for stabilizing all those forces i mean it's it's crucial for you to build your obliques uh so you have the the ability to rotate and and to be able to uh cut laterally and uh, be able to stabilize it. So for me, that that's what's always challenging for me is when I hear from the aesthetic world, things like trying to, you know, shrink down the waist and taper everything in and it's too blocking, too blocking. It's, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me <laughs> because what my view of the human body is this performance, this beautiful performance machine, you know, that this, that I, my abilities uh, uh, enhance because of what I'm doing in the gym, as opposed to me just trying to con- like conform my body into a certain type of a look. But yeah, so obliques are, I mean, they're a vital component to, uh, if I go into deadlifting, if I go into squatting, like it's all these other factors of stabilizing the spine. It's just, uh, it's going to enhance that entire process like tenfold. Yeah. The, the, the whole, um, super tiny waist, super wide shoulder, uh, look for bodybuilding is an, an exaggerated, perverted vo- version of what we mm. deem to be attractive, which is healthy, which is. If you have a natural strong body and you're naturally lean, your waist will be smaller because you're not because that's where yeah. men carry body fat. So if you're lean, there's no fat there. And if you're muscular, you'll probably have muscular shoulders and back and so you'll have what's called a V taper. But in bodybuilding and physique competition, they've perverted that to make it so extreme to where it may look good on stage, but it, it, in real life it may actually kind of look kind of weird, right? It doesn't look yeah. like it's And wouldn't not that the right. goal be to get uh, bigger shoulders, chest to 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 prevent to, or to promote that look. Excuse me. You know, instead of of trying to eliminate a blockier waist. Look, it's no different than you know, men find women with uh, you know supple breasts attractive, right? So, getting you know double D implants is a perversion of what we consider to be attractive. It, the reality is that it's 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 supposed to show youthfulness and and you know fertility and all that stuff, and so. It's, it's the same thing with extreme small waist. I'm going to wear a squeam. I'm going to atrophy the muscles of my waist, and I'm going to balloon myself up with you know, all this you know, upper body muscle, and it's going to look kind of crazy. The reality is in real life, if you're lean and you develop your midsection, you're going to look really good. Like Nobody's going to be like, oh, you know what? You shouldn't be working out your obliques anymore because they're too developed. That's not going to happen, men or women. In fact, there's a lot of – one of the things about CrossFit that's been pretty interesting is this promotion of – kind of these functionally strong looking women. I don't know, I, you know, I, I use the word functional because they don't look like female bodybuilders, but they do look muscular. Mm-hmm. But all these women, if you'll notice, they show off their midsections and they've got these nice developed abs and, and obliques. Mm-hmm. And the cool thing about it is women are really like, oh, I want to look like that, you mm-hmm. know? So it's, it's it's pretty cool. But for what, what are some of your favorite exercises for obliques, Justin? Do you like just the side chop 
type stuff because that's my yeah favorite. I do I do I love side chops I love um, even if I'm just trying to stabilize and I'm I'm doing suitcase carries with with kettlebells and there it is that's you know I, I love doing those types of things where uh, unilaterally I can challenge the obliques um, but yeah it, in terms of like trying to to do like some of the what do you call that one the the sort of like teeter totter like left to right like i kind of avoid that very specific it's like a type ql of exercise more than it's no a this quad university guy actually just did a great little post on did that he? yeah he compared yeah. that versus this the suitcase carry and just how, how oh su- really yeah how superior the suitcase carry is to oh, in see, comparison. Yeah, i like that guy yeah, yeah i like the side chops and the downward chops and then and then you showed chops me are my favorite and then you landmine rotation that. stuff is oh, bad man. Mine is, oh man danny just did yes. a great youtube uh on uh on this that did he and he did some variations with that i really liked so mm-hmm. you, you want a good little oblique routine, man. Go check out that video he just did. Next question is from Custom Concern 15. What do you think of people who say glute bridges are the number one compound lift? <laughs> oh, my God. This is a result of all the great information that uh, Brett Contreras has been putting out. And I think that I think it's in great information that he's providing, and I think that he's completely, I mean, changed the way people have been exercising in the gym. I mean, when was the last time you guys went to the gym and not seen somebody do a a hip thrust or a floor bridge? I and that is the result of that man. I mean, he literally You yeah, never he, saw anybody no, uh, especially yeah. men. Yeah, he has yeah, literally especially men. he has literally just changed how how many many people exercise and work out. And for for the better, I think for the most part, I really think that um it, it's an incredible movement for somebody who's trying to to build glutes. Uh, especially if they, especially if you have a challenge, if you're not very good at squatting. So I, I do think it's a, a, a great uh, compliment to the other superior compound lifts like squatting and deadlifting, in my opinion. Uh, I laugh at it when you try and say it's, it's the number one compound lift because it's not, it's just, this isn't a debate. It's not the number one compound lift. Uh, the skill set that it takes to squat or deadlift is far greater, and if the skills if the if the skill is higher, the rewards are going to be higher. The carryover is going to be higher. The benefits that you get from the movement. Now, can you make the argument? And this is the argument I know that Brett makes with with glute bridges is that it's the best lift for your butt. You know, mm-hmm. specifically just for your butt. And there's an argument there that you can make. But if we're just comparing straight up, what's the best compound lift? No, it's not. No. Yeah, they're just trying to eliminate risk is how I look at it for glute development. And, um, you know, there, there's always been this argument of like compressive forces on the spine and, you know, trying to really, uh, you know, see whether or not the squat is the king of all the exercises versus, um, you know, maybe even like unilateral training, for instance. Like some people like think that unilateral training is the, the best way to go. Um, and I mean, you could build up a case and an argument for all these things, but, uh, in terms of compound exercises, I mean, compound like squat, it's, it's really hard for, for me to, to listen to anybody that doesn't, that, that argues against the backloaded squat. Yeah. It's, can, is there any, I mean, is there any more foundational human movement than being able to squat? Uh, think about the carryover that it has in the rest well, of your that's life. That's why, that's why it, it it's, there's not even an argument that this is a better when in your life will you ever ever be laying down on your back with your knees bent at 45 degrees and have to lift 400 pounds off of you yeah when yeah, tell that, that time in college I mean, when you're right, when? some real when? real whale never yeah. never ever ever will that happen really in your life off, so yeah. th- so it is not the number one for me for something to be the number one it has to have it has to have some some definite points towards functional yeah and just because it's addressing the posterior chain, because I know that's a debate that somebody on our forum like a year ago got into this with me. You remember that? We went on the, we went back and forth on this a little bit. Smart kid too, and and tried to argue that it was the most that the hip thrust is the most functional movement mm-hmm. that you could do. So I've heard the most functional. Now I'm hearing the number one compound lift. It's Wait, none I, of- I have a scenario for you. Okay, let's okay let's let's reenact this. So a car runs you over like but just just your lower body mm. and it's life or death you have to get out and so hip thrusting it off of you no I, this still yeah. doesn't even work thank you brett yeah, Contreras, sorry. for that one yeah, yeah. no it, it's it, it it can't come look a barbell squat also works the posterior chain it also works a lot of the anterior chain which the glute bridge does not you hit very little of the anterior chain 
with a glute bridge. That's referring to the muscles of the front side of the body. How important are the quads to overall function, uh, you know, overall human function? Oh, Very massive. important. Yeah. They're extremely, they're, one, they're, they're some of the largest muscles of your, uh, of your body. They're extremely important, probably as important, or maybe slightly less important than maybe your glutes or hips, but they're still way up there, if not at the same level. And so if you're just going to glute bridge, you're not going to get very developed quads. You're not going to have a good, um, and, and also positioning of a barbell squat with the thoracic mobility, shoulder position. It, there's no comparison. It's mm -hmm. definitely not the number one compound lift. Well, the if, reason, and another reason why it's not is if you are going to only do one or the other for the rest of your life, one of them actually you can get away with. Squatting. I mean, if you were to, if if I were to do one lower body movement and I could couldn't do any other. Oh, you know, easy squat. And we had to pick one and only one. That's easy, all you yeah. get. It, it doesn't even come close. No, no, it doesn't. No, it's a good exercise. But if I were to, right. you know, if I were to list the top five compound movements, um, you know, you'd be like barbell squat, deadlift, overhead press. You know, those probably be your your top three. Mm -hmm. Bench press would be in there. Maybe a row would be in there. That's five. I mean, I'd say glute bridge would make top eight, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe top ten. But I don't think it would be top four, five. Definitely not top four. Definitely not one. No, and definitely not one. But it's a great movement. So I, I think I think it's important. It's like anything else, right? We it wasn't around just ten years ago, pretty much, right? It just really mm -hmm. didn't exist. Not at not at the level that's been pushed now. And I think it's incredible. I mean, I it's I, just gained popularity. Any, I mean, I make Katrina do them all the time. Any client of mine that ever wants to build their butt, they make her do them. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> What's today's workout? <laughs> glue bridges. That's all we're doing. I glue bridges. Want to. You're Hip doing it. That's it. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's a it's an incredible movement. It's, it is. I'm, I don't want to sound like we're shitting on the movement, but I just it's what happens when something new. Ha it's novelty, right? We just love it. It's it's new. Everyone's yeah. doing it now. It's just don't you wish you were the guy because he's like the, forever the guy that is the glute. He's the hip thrust guy, right? Forever, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What if you were the squat guy? Like, what if nobody ever squatted? And you're yeah. like, dude, check out the second you started teaching people. You'd be like the yeah. the trainer of all time, right? If you uh, introduced the squat, you'd be on the Mount Rushmore for oh, sure. For sure. Yeah. Next question is from Tracy Lavalle. Thoughts on unsolicited gym advice? Mm. Do you guys ever get this? Of course. You did? <laughs> yeah, I used to always get this. When people just come up to you and just start uh, giving you yeah, advice. Yeah, I mean, That's I don't annoying. get it now, but I used no. to get it a lot. Yeah, especially as a young trainer. As a young trainer, uh, I used to I used to fucking hate it when somebody would do this when I was with a client. You ever get that? Oh. You ever get some fucking old guy who's been in the gym yeah. for 30 years yeah, or she's something? She's going to hurt her knees if she keeps yeah, doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, right? And then he comes over and tries yeah. to coach you. Oh, my you. God, I've heard that. Like, yeah. easy guy. <laughs> easy weight belt cable guy. Yeah. Come over and see. <laughs> it's <a> weight belt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's that guy. It, it is. is. He's right, in a tank yeah. top. He's got a weight belt on. Your back. It and happened to me. And he's swinging his arms doing cable curls, coming over telling me my single leg toe touch is going to hurt my client. That's so funny, dude. You just said that. I kicked, <laughs> I kicked someone out for that doing that. That guy is always, I, always around. I actually kicked out a guy out of the gym for doing that. <laughs> right. A bait, weight belt, old guy, belly, dude, walking around. And he yeah. kept he kept going up to my trainers while they were with clients. It's that guy. And he was giving Every advice. gym has that yeah. guy. Yeah. And, I, and I went up to him and I pulled him aside and I'm like, listen, I said, uh, I know you, you, you feel like you need to give people advice, but please don't approach my trainers while they're with clients because it doesn't look good for them. He's like, well, they're doing everything wrong. I'm like, well, if you do it again, I'm going to kick you out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he did it again, and I kicked him out. And he, he'd been a member forever, which is hilarious. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like uh, unsolicited <laughs> advice uh, given to me, and nor do I like to give it to other people. In fact, I remember, too, being a trainer, and I'd have clients come to me or people come to me on the gym that knew I was a trainer and that they saw somebody doing an exercise wrong or they would come over and be like, how come you don't go talk to her or tell her that or go tell him that? And it's just... You know, there, there, there's a, a right way and a wrong way to do this, and I really feel like you have, as a, as a trainer, you have to learn to, to pick up on the signals that somebody is looking for help. Yeah. You know, and social cues. Yeah, there are, and, and it, to me, because I've been doing this for a very long time, it's very obvious. You know, it's the they're usually looking around. They're, yeah, they're looking yeah. around. They're they're, lost, re they're like reading the machine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they they have this. They look up in the sky, puzzled look after they do something. It's a very obvious. Please <laughs> they come put forty fives on there, and then they're like, no, and then they take yeah. It all off I mean, and there's, pretend there's on. a lot of great <laughs> yeah. signs that says this person is not going to be offended by me walking over and saying, "Hey, sir or ma'am, can I help you?" You know, or would you like me to show you how to use that? Those people don't mind. But the the chick or the dude with his headphones on that's getting after their workout, 
sure as shit don't want some fucking young kid walking over, tapping him on the shoulder in the middle of a set, telling him how. A better question is, has that ever worked? Yeah, giving no. someone advice? Yeah, like somebody is like, thank you. No, yeah, not, I not, was doing that wrong. Not unsolicited. When it's, yeah, when it's, unsolicited. Like, when it's like that, it, most people have, it puts a bad taste in their mouth. Plus, and this is just in communication, period. You're, you're not going to ever get a, a win an argument. You're never going to get your point across until the person you're communicating the information to is willing to receive that. Mm-hmm. And if they're not in that place to receive it or asking for help, it's real. You're really only feeding your own ego to go mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. So it's all. It's almost always that guy. You know, like in the what the the visual that I gave everybody. It's that guy who is full of himself or wants to feed his own ego and is insecure and that needs to come over and feel important yeah. to tell. We weren't doing that balancing shit in my day. Right. Yeah. yeah that wants to come <laughs> over and tell somebody what to do. So. It's it's for uh, this is when I start to feel bad for some women in the gym because. This is a way for, I've seen in my, in my experience, this is where I see guys trying to flirt with girls. Oh, yeah. You know, they go up to them like, hey, let me show you how to do this uh, oh, yeah. exercise properly, <laughs> young lady. Yeah, yeah, smooth move. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then the real cute smart, smart girl goes like, oh, I'm going to get some free training right here. Yeah. Or, <laughs> hey, I can meet you on Tuesdays yeah. at 5 o'clock. And yeah. next, how many of those guys have you met? That uh, well, like, I've just seen the idiot in the gym also try to help gullible. girls. And, and he has no idea what the hell he's doing, yeah. which always cracks me up. I actually, I actually uh, had a somebody... Early in the early days of, of Maps Anabolic, when I, when we first launched it, this might have even been before uh, Mind Pump. I don't remember. It's like we, sold, we only sold a few programs. But uh, a young lady was following the program and was doing shoulder presses, phase one, heavy. And some guy comes up to her in the gym, and she had headphones on and everything. He comes up to her, and he like he's waving at her, and she takes the headphone like halfway through her set, and he's like... You shouldn't be lifting heavy for your shoulders because oh. you, you don't need to train your shoulders. Just focus on your. And he's like telling me what to work on, on her body. <laughs> and she was like appalled. And she met. And she she was in our forum early days. And she you know was writing about it. And I'm like, did you have headphones on? Were you looking at him? She's like, no, I was looking straight ahead. Like, what a piece of shit. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's just trying to flirt with you right now. No, that's an, that's probably the most common thing I would think. Yeah. I that's got to be the most yeah. common. And thing. I do feel for girls that that do go through this because you there. I think every gym has. Multiple guys and a lot of trainers are guilty of this. A lot of male trainers that used to work for me were, and it's not to say that women can't possibly do this either. It's just a, it's a male dominated space, and a lot of guys have done this. That work. It's probably for me. easier for a female trainer to approach guys than it is, unless uh, unless, unless, it's, it's, unless it's his ego you're hitting. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's no, I don't know. On the guy. Yeah, no, I, that's a t- that's a tough one. I think it's probably more, for a female trainer to approach a male in the gym to give them advice is probably that's actually true because yeah. it's their ego, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That looks like it's too heavy for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need some help. What? <laughs> I, uh, you know, on this note, I will say this, if you need help in the gym and you're working out and you see someone who looks like they know what they're doing and they're fit and all that stuff, nine out of 10 times, they'd be more happy, more than happy to help you. This has always been my experience. And it's funny because the fit muscular people in the gym who really look like they know what they're doing, um, they look intimidating many times. But when I was a kid, the nicest people, sometimes. I I mean, Mm -hmm. if I'm in the, even when I'm in my workout and I'm in a hurry and I'm in the gym. If somebody's honestly asking me a question and needs some help, I have no problem devoting five minutes of my time well, to help them out. What people need to understand, it's actually a very nice compliment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If somebody, if you are, if you've worked at your craft, you've got great form, you got a great physique, and someone comes up and asks for your opinion, there's a, and they don't know who you are. That's a compliment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They look at you. You look like the fuck you know what you're doing. You, so I'm coming over to ask you. Most people are not assholes about that. And so, uh, to your point, Sal. This is how I think advice should be given in the gym is that it should it should be less of people giving people advice and it should be the people that need the advice should be more comfortable with to ask ask, ask people ask and not be afraid to approach some of these people that look quote unquote like Dude, meatheads and that we stereo we stereotype these poor guys that they are intimidating and they're full of themselves nicest the, people you'll ever run yeah, into dude, that, I, some of the most hardcore filthy bodybuilding dungeon gyms I've ever been in I, as a kid I, you go up to them and you ask them questions and they will all help you you know yeah. my, the, some of the best advice I got early on as a young lifter I was a kid man I was like 14 or 15 maybe 15 years old fucking group of power lifters in this yeah. squat cage squatting hella weight and these guys were all probably in the 30s and 40s older guys 
jacked and I'm watching them and I'm working up the courage and they're grunting and yelling and slapping each other and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to ask them for help and one of them's going to kill me. I was, I was so intimidated. Well, but I, I worked up the courage, went up there and those fuckers, they spent, they actually took me through a workout and they, they helped me out and showed me what to do and forever changed, you know, how I lifted weights. That's the ironic part though. Like it's, it's funny because it, it, most of the intimidation, especially with women too, like uh, some of these other gyms that are kind of dirty and you see people that are like in there just about themselves and doing work and um, putting it in. That's honestly where you're going to get harassed the least, Yeah, you know, as opposed to these other like uh, commercial. big box commercial gyms yeah. where everybody's in there. It's like this meat market. Everybody's, you know, like harassing and flirting and doing all this nonsense. If, if you're walking up to ask and, and, and of course, I'm saying this, there's always an exception to the rule, but I, I mean, I'd be willing to bet quite a bit of money that you won't run into a problem with somebody like this because I can't think of ever meeting somebody who has an incredible physique. Like if you can just, you look at somebody, you can tell that person has put probably years into their craft mm -hmm. to look this way and a lot of discipline and consistency. And you asked him a question about something in the gym. I, I, I've never met one of those people to be rude at all. I've met no. a lot of rude people in the gym. For sure. A lot yeah. of rude people. Yeah. Fucking a lot of people I want to throw through the window. It's never the guy or the girl that is jacked and looks like they've been lifting every single day for the last it's five years. It's because they yep. respect Yes. They respect the craft. Yes. It's just like what Justin it's was like saying. It's like their church. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That it's, And it's literally like somebody who is a part of a, a, a congregation and, and respect that area so much and a new person comes in they, and they know how hard it is to get from where you are to where they are. Exactly. And they are they are not... Uh, they're not feel they don't feel competitive with you. They don't feel like you're yeah. like at all. You're, you're it's more like man. I really hope this because they know the failure rate. Mm -hmm. They know that there's a very high chance you'll never get there. And they're not ones to say ha ha. You couldn't get no, to this. I, I, they're more like let me give you some help and tips. I'm telling you, some of the some of the most amazing respectful places you'll ever go are these old school dungeons with these hardcore lifters. You'll go in there. You'll see the old guys in their 50s and 60s who are revered as gods just because they've been lifting forever like yeah. everybody respects them then you've got the young kids coming in that everybody's kind of helping out you've got the girls that come in there and all the dudes are like big brothers to her I mean, it's just a great yeah, it's, totally. it's it's a great environment and it is it's just because they respect the craft so much and so if you need help and you see some of these people that look really fit they've been doing it for a long time they've got good form i Nine, nine out of ten times, if not ten out of ten times, if you go up to them and say, hey, do you have a second? I have a question. You look like you know what you're doing. Would you mind helping me on something? Watch what happens. Right. Next question is from Jake Fricky. What is a good starting point for a complete newbie wanting to learn about entrepreneurship? Books, websites, et cetera. Mm. Good place to start. Just start doing it. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, there's just so much to cover. Like it. I don't know that like a very specific book had that much impact other than like experience, but I know there's a lot of books in this direction. There's a lot of gurus in this direction. Um, and there's, there's just a lot of different paths that you can take with it. And again, there's the, the process too of paralysis by analysis. I think if, if, if I was to give myself any advice was to just get going, like get going even earlier than I did just to, to really like learn and hone in on what it takes to to actually keep it going. This is actually similar to the last question, at least to how we ended it off. I think the most valuable thing you could do if you want to learn about entrepreneurship is to uh, offer your, sell, your, your services for free to another entrepreneur who is willing to mentor you. <clears throat> Literally tell them, I will do whatever you want. I'll shadow. If you could just let me shadow you. And just watch what you're doing, and I'll help you out to be a, kind of a free intern, mm -hmm. and to value just that, observe. and to value fucking value that men mentorship. Okay, I can't tell you this enough. If a kid comes to me and says, "I want to be an entrepreneur. I'll work for free. I'll do it. Just let me hang around and be around you," I'm gonna want to help this kid out. If I got a kid who comes up to me and is like, "Hey, I want to learn from you, but I want you to pay me," part of me is gonna be a little bit less like, okay, a little less enthusiastic about it. So, the, and entrepreneurs, successful ones, really love helping other people out. And I can't think of a better way to learn how to be an entrepreneur than than having a mentor, like shadowing someone, shadowing a mentor and watching them. Yeah, and, and to Justin's point, to just getting out there and failing. I mean, to be honest, I mean, Gary Vee says this really well, like, you know, you need to eat shit for eight to nine years. 
Like, yeah. That's about right. Yeah, it's, and it's true. I mean, <laughs> I think is, uh, I, I very rarely ever. I mean, uh, personally, I don't. I don't know a single entrepreneur that hit it out the park their first time, their second time, or probably even their first three or five times. I mean, most people that are really, really successful that we all look up to and we read all their books and and we aspire to be like them, most all of them failed, you know, 10 to 50 times before that. So I really think that part of it is 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 repetition. Now, I, I can give you some really good books, books that impact me, uh, along my journey, uh, one of the, the best books that I, I recommend to people is uh, Jack Welch's Winning. That's a really good uh, business book. I love anything related to leadership because I think being a successful entrepreneurship requires you to be a great leader, uh, even if you're only leading yourself. I still think, and that's why I, I love to start people with John C. Maxwell's Developing the Leader Within. And then there's a follow up book to that, Developing the Leaders Around You. Uh, I think are great. I think uh, One Minute Manager is a one day read that I always recommend recommend to people. I think that's a great uh, a great read. Um, and then anything on on like uh, on failure. And I can't, I'm drawing a blank right now on, on a good book. And I know I've read several along the along that line. And I, I think, read one was Reinvent Yourself was a good one. Oh, there you go. Rework. Yeah. That's another rework. Is that was one. a really good book. Um, I love a lot of the information. I know the yeah. boys are not as big a fan as I am of Gary V stuff, but I think Gary V puts out a lot of uh, relevant stuff today. I think that building a business today, I mean, no, I like his mentality of uh, what you can control. Like, so if you have things, you can sell those things. Yeah, like there's, it's you have to do the the mundane things in order to build something. Right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you can't avoid the mundane side of business. Like you have to really just dig yourself in and eat shit. As he says, I do agree with that hundred yeah. uh, percent. And there's, there's times of going through the process. I think the books themselves will, will reveal themselves to you of where you are in the stage of your entrepreneurship. Um, and like for me, e-myth, uh, was was huge for me just to, to to understand like where I was as a technician like I was like so involved in my business and right. like trying to structure my business personally to work for myself but but how do I pull myself out of that I had no idea you know right. it's a, another good thing you could do to learn how to be a good entrepreneur is to uh, work in a corporation move yourself up to management so you can learn how to manage people they have systems already in place so it's a great way like with training wheels so you can kind of learn what it means to run a business, and also to do a sales job and learn how to be good at a sales job. I think that those skills will benefit anybody, mm -hmm. um, but will definitely benefit an entrepreneur because one thing that sales teaches you is how to deal with failure. I mean, if you're, if you're a, especially a job with a high, a high pro, a fast sales process, like selling cars or the fastest sales process was like selling gym memberships, for example, you're going to learn how to deal with a lot of no. You're going to learn how to deal with a lot of failure because you're going to you're going to be swinging the bat quite a bit. Um, and if you get good at that and good at dealing with that, you're it's going to set you up for dealing with what I consider the most challenging thing with starting a business, which is uh, failure. Um, and not necessarily failure that your idea may completely fail, but the fact that how you think it may have worked might have to completely change. And and for some people, that feels like failure. Like they have this mm. dream of, this is what my product's gonna look like, this is how I'm gonna sell mm. it. And then they realize like, okay, it's not gonna look anything like that. I'm gonna have to right. move in this direction. And you gotta be able to deal Being with flexible. that. You gotta be able to deal well, with that. Well, I'm, I'm gonna be frank with you too, Jake. I think, you know, you gotta learn to ask better questions too. And to Sal's point about having a mentor and, or following somebody around that has a successful business. I think one of the biggest pet peeves that I've had, and I've mentored a lot of trainers that used to work for me and people that I'm connected to. And uh, one of the things that frustrates me the most is that they don't ask. Mm -hmm. Like I'm an open book. I, one of the things that I've always promised that I, I, I will give every every bit of information and knowledge that I have. I'm not, a, I don't have a scarcity of mindset. I'm not afraid of you taking all that I've learned and, and compounding and, and, and surpassing me what I did, whatever I did. So you just got to ask. And I'm surrounded by young minds a lot that are with me on a very regular basis. And they all are talking about how they want to be these great entrepreneurs. And then they don't even ask me certain questions. And I think like you, you have this resource in front of you and it just blows my mind that for some reason that people just fail to ask, like, 
learn to ask questions and be specific. Like, this is a very vague question. Like, where do I start a complete newbie to learn entrepreneurship? Well, fuck. I don't know where you're at, where you struggle, because, you know, I know I listed a bunch of, of books, but if you're the type of person who struggles with self-discipline, I have a different book for that person. If you're somebody who has terrible organization skills, then I have a book for that person. Like, if, if, if you don't, or you don't even have an idea, like start with why. There's a great book. Like if you don't even know your why or purpose of what you're trying to build, there's a there's a great book we didn't even mention. So mm-hmm. the, when I recommend books, I normally recommend books to people based off of where I think they need the most help. And the only way you're going to get through to someone like us on, on a Q&A like this is asking very specific questions about the business. Like, you know, maybe you're not somebody who understands the back end of everything that goes on at Mind Pump, but fucking ask a question. You know, ask a question that's related to that, that we can answer and say like, well, this is how we set that up or Mm -hmm. that who we have working that side of the house. This is what they do. This is what what it does for the business. This is how important it's been to the business. Like, so if you can surround yourself with successful people and then you can learn to ask the right questions. I mean, much of my success has come from that was surrounding myself with great minds and very successful people and not being afraid to ask very direct, straight questions. What's the worst they're going to tell you is no. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't want to tell you that. And then fuck that guy or girl. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to tell you that. Like, I'm not that person. You could ask me anything and I'll tell you. But to me, that when when people ask these, these, these very vague questions, it's like you got to learn how to ask the right questions that are going to truly help your vision or your goals or what it is that you're trying to aspire to be or do. And the better that you get at asking your questions, then the better you're going to be as an entrepreneur. And and then if you can learn to surround yourself with as many successful people in entrepreneurship and ask the right questions, shit, I mean, you'd be surprised what you'll get from that. What I think is cool about this is entrepreneurship seems to be on the upswing, or at least the 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 talk around it seems to be on the upswing. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, I think it's cool. I do. I really think it's cool because... Forget about the fact that it was whether or not more. I mean, if you throw some fucking ass shots up and you have ten thousand followers, everybody's an entrepreneur no, now. Well, it reminds me of like the. <laughs> you got to qualify what. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You that say, defines. And you and uh, you have. Three, I own a business. Three and, companies you're affiliated yeah. with, and you make ten percent commission, and it comes out to be maybe eight hundred bucks a well, month. I'm a Mona V rep. Call so yourself an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. I sell Amway, so yeah. I'm an. No, no, no. But I, I like that. There's a lot more um, respect around entrepreneurship. It seems uh, today than there used to be. It's it's becoming more of a. And I like that. I like that because entrepreneurs. See, that's funny you say that because I disagree. You think there's less respect? <laughs> I think there's less respect. Nah, I right. think it's they've. Uh, I think the more. I, I think, think they've bast- I think a lot of people have bastardized the name. I think it's become everybody is now like if like I don't say if someone asks me what I do, I most certainly don't say entrepreneur. If I say entrepreneur, then someone goes like, "Oh, you're unemployed." Yeah, <laughs> you know that, that's well, what that like, means. You're like an artist. That, yeah, that's what it, it seems like. It's become that now to me because yeah, I could see that too because so many people call themselves that because they have somewhat of a following on social media and then they now have allowed these companies to take advantage of their small following and they sell their products for a percentage of money, which is normally well, next but to nothing. I see that too, but I also see the side of if it sparks, if it gives someone enough courage to go that route, but then figure out that they need to take another step. I like that because okay, that's fair. You I'll know, take, because on entre- take that. Yeah. Because entrepreneurs, uh, they're the ones that, that, shake things are the ones that move things we're the ones that employ people and create new industries and well, america was built on that and, right? and it's still i mean the tech industry is which is driving the world now we're in the age of information is driven by uh you know entrepreneurs and so i think this is a it's i don't think everybody's built to be an entrepreneur i'm not saying that i think no. most people are not but uh we need people to be the ones that have the courage to risk mm-hmm. their capital to do this crazy shit, um, you know, I, I mean, if it's their capital, let them risk it. But the fact that they're willing to do so, I mean, you know, there's people who I know people who have successful businesses who didn't make a dime for five years. Mm-hmm. So they risked all their capital for five years to finally be able to make a profit and employ all these people. Imagine if they were afraid and they said, no, I have to make money. I can't not make money for five years. Then all those jobs and all those uh, amazing opportunities wouldn't exist. So I think it's a. I That's think one it's of the good first thing. questions that Shark Tank guys ask after you, they ask the people of their, their revenue. One of the first questions, almost always, Mark Cuban or one of the other sharks from Shark Tank always follow up and ask, which is a great show to watch. Yeah, but that follow up and ask is, you know, they 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 first ask, well, would your company make this last year? And mm-hmm. you go, oh, it made you know one point five million or whatever. The very next question they want to know is, how much of that did you pay yourself? 
mm-hmm. and you can just see them roll their eyes when you have taken 80 percent or more yeah. of the income that the company has made because yeah, right. they they just know that's not that's not you're not building a solid foundation for a business long term by every by cashing in right right, right by taking all the money it's you know it's the, the those that think of it at long term typically take a a, a significant you're not lower building a salary. paycheck you're building a company yeah that's the thing that all that stuff comes later so yep. you, have, you have to build something that's going to have staying power exactly and with that go to mindpumpfree.com and check out our free guides we have a bunch of fitness guides on there absolutely free mindpumpfree.com you can also find us on instagram our individual pages my page is Mind Pump Sal, Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.